Extreme Trends presents This driver's oxygen gets cut off 300 feet underwater. Here is how he survives. Before we begin, do us a favor and click that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be inspired by these heartwarming stories every day. Chris Lemons has an unusual job. His work would have him and his crewmates diving hundreds of feet into the North Sea, where they'd repair oil rigs submerged underwater. Obviously, this type of task doesn't make for a traditional day job. He and the rest of his crew aboard the Bibi Topaz had a simple mission. Their vessel was to plunge deep into the North Sea. Then Lemons, Dave Uasa, and Duncan Alcock would step into an even smaller diving bell to take them farther down beneath the waves. First, they had dived 300 feet down from the bell. Then Lemons and Uasa began repair work on a damaged pipe while Alcock operated their vessel. The start of their mission had gone off without a hitch, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. All of a sudden, the Bibi Topaz started drifting through the North Sea, dragging the diving bell with it. For Lemons and Uasa, this posed a life-threatening problem. Their oxygen cords were connected to the smaller vessel that had begun to move without warning. Even through the water, Yuasa could hear as Lemon's life support cable, surrounded in metal, snapped under the pressure. Aboard the diving bell, Alcock pulled on Lemon's oxygen supply cord. He kept doing that until the ragged ends rose above the bottom of the vessel. With that, they knew they had to embark on a rescue mission, but one that might be in vain. Still, they had to try. The team supervisor, Craig Frederick, called down to the underwater team. Thanks to a sound-powered phone he had on deck, frantically begging the divers to return to the bell. Lemons obeyed orders, following his umbilical so that he could return to its base, the diving bell. As he pulled himself out of the oil drilling structure, though, he realized he had another huge problem. His support cord had gotten stuck on something. He called into Alcock, asking him to give a bit more slack on the line. The dive supervisor advised Alcock to pull on Lemons' cord to see what came back with it. If the diver's helmet remained attached to the umbilical, then he'd have a serious problem. Once Alcock pulled on the cables, he eventually got to the end where they had snapped. Luckily, Lemon still had his helmet on, but the helmet wouldn't be enough to sustain Lemon's life for long. Frederick estimated that the diver had about a 10-minute supply of emergency oxygen, and time had started ticking as soon as the cable snapped. Aboard the Bibi Topaz, he and the rest of the team tried to regain control of their navigation so they could stop moving and halt the diving bell's drift too. All the while, Yuasa drifted in the water as the diving bell pulled his cable. He mustered up the strength to pull himself back to the vessel by the umbilical. After a half an hour, much more time than Lemons had in his oxygen tank, Frederick had regained control of the vessels, which meant that Yuasa could dive for his comrade. Lemons' lifeless body reposed atop the oil rigging structure. Yuasa frankly said, I didn't expect him to be alive. Why would you? But Yuasa still shared his breathing tube with Lemons as he carried the weight of the diver's body back to the bell. Once Alcock slipped off the helmet covering Lemons' head, he saw an unforgettable sight. As he described it, Lemons is a bald guy. He's half frozen to death, and he's gone as blue as a pair of denim jeans. Regardless of how dire Lemons' situation appeared, though, Alcock positioned the lifeless body so that he could try mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. He pushed fingers into the diver's nose, kept his head straight, and breathed air into his mouth. Then the unthinkable happened. Lemons took a huge, resonating inhale. Alcock said that the sound of Lemons' breath reminded him of New Year crackers, fireworks, you name it, everything. It was like, bloody hell, he's actually alive! Even with the diver breathing, though, there still lingered the possibility that he had suffered brain damage while underwater for so long without oxygen. Eventually, though, Lemons regained total coherence. He began speaking to his co-workers on the diving bell within minutes of his resuscitation. He defied some serious odds in making it out of the North Sea with his life. In general, a human can only survive for three minutes without oxygen. Surprisingly, though, Lemons said he quickly felt at peace with what he thought was his fate. Once I had resigned myself to the fact that I wasn't going to be able to save myself, calm comes over you. It wasn't a case of frantically thrashing about and searching for a solution. It was a case of quiet resignation and thinking of the people you're going to leave behind, he admits. So needless to say, when Lemons awoke in the midst of mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, he felt very confused. He told BBC Future, it took several days for him to understand the gravity of the situation, he said. As far as how he survived, Lemons smiles as he says in his last breath, I don't think I'll ever know. Afterward, Lemons returned home, and a few months later, he and his fiancée became husband and wife. Perhaps most surprising of all, though, his experience did little to deter him from pursuing his career. A mere three weeks after the incident, Lemons returned to the North Sea with his team, ready to dive once again, and he continues to do so today. 
That was an incredible near-death experience. Thanks for watching until the end. Be sure to tap on the next videos for more heart-pumping stories.